morning, children. Happy Sunday. You are welcome to our Sunday school this morning. Hope you are enjoying the sunshine. Before we start our lesson, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you for another Sunday. Thank you for being with us throughout the week. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our teachers. Thank you for all our friends. We have come to learn our Sunday school this morning. Come and open our understanding. Come and teach us yourself. Plant all these words on the fleshy table of our hearts. And in the end, take us to your home in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our lesson today is Lesson 10D. And the title is Elisha Walk for God. Our memory verse is And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. Luke chapter 9, verse 43. Our text is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7, and chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. But we are going to read Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 4, and chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, then 5 and 6. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditors is come to take unto him my sons to be born men. 2. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine aunt made at not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. 3. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Chapter 6, verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Two, let us go, we pray thee, and unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. 3. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. Verse 5. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. 6. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick, and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Let's put our Bibles down and listen to the lesson. Children, do you believe that this little oil can fill up this pot? It did. Do you also believe that this axe head that is an heavy metal can float on water? It did. This could only happen by the power of God. And these are two of the many miracles that Elisha did. And we are going to learn about them in our lesson of today. Remember in our last week lesson, we learned about Elisha 
asking of double portion of Elijah's spirit and he received he received it so in a lesson of today a widow do you know who a widow is a woman whose husband is dead she was owing a man and the man said if she cannot pay the money back she he was going to take our children are slaves and this woman came to the man of God because she believed that the man of God can help her children when we have problem we need to go to the right person and God will answer our prayers so Elisha asked the woman what she has got in the house and the woman said, she hasn't got anything but this little oil. And Elisha told her to tell her sons to go and borrow many pots from her neighbors. The children went to borrow pots from the neighbors and brought them to the mom. Then the mom went back to Elisha and told her told him that they've got all the pots and Elisha said she should fill the pots with from the little oil that she has then the woman began to pour pot, pot one was full pot two pot three pot four pot five she filled all the pots from the little oil don't you see that that's a miracle? And also, she asked the children, are there any more pots? They told the mom, no more pots. Then the oil stopped. Children, that is the mighty power of God. Through Elijah, God can do the same for us. If we are obedient, just like the children of the woman, she told them to go and borrow pots from the neighbors. They didn't go and play ball or go and play with their friends. They obeyed their mom and they went immediately. And the woman too, when Elisha said, pour oil from the little oil you have into the pots. She didn't argue with Elisha. She believed the word of God and miracle happened. God will also do miracles in our lives when we are obedient to our parents and also to our teachers and obedient to the word of God just as we are learning this morning. The woman went back to Elisha and told him that they have filled all the pots. Then Elisha told her to sell the oil and pay her debts. Do you know that the woman wouldn't have any problem in selling the oil because in those days Oil were used for many things. They use it in the kitchen. They use it to annoy the king. They also use it for graces and wounds. Just as we do these days. The woman's obedience paid off. She was able to pay her debts and to look after her family of the leftover money. Another miracle in her lesson is the axe head that floats on water. The sons of the prophets who were living with Elisha told him that they need to build a bigger house and that they have to go and cut wood. They asked Elisha to follow them. As they were cutting wood, the axe head fell in the water and this axe head was borrowed. They told Elisha and Elisha asked them where it dropped. As they showed him the very point, Elisha cut a stick and pointed exactly at that point and this axe head floats on top of the water. This is a miracle. Only the power of God can do this. Is there anything to add for God? Maybe we are struggling in our school with our maths or our literacy or even science. 
we can ask God to come and give us understanding, to give us wisdom. Or have we got any sickness in our body? We can ask God to come and heal us. This is the power of God. God can do anything. Remember that song? God can do anything. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. God will never fail us. Children, we have learned about two miracles in this lesson. The one of the widow and the one of the axe head that floats on water. But the greatest miracle that Jesus can perform in our lives is to forgive us all our sins. We too can come to Jesus, tell him all the bad things we have done, and promise him that we will never do them again. Jesus will come into our hearts, forgive us all our sins, and perform the greatest miracle, which is called salvation. This is the end of our lesson. Our statement is God's mighty power. Activities for ages 2 to 5 is connect the dots. The two sons went from house to house, house collecting some things. Connect the dots and see what these things were. For ages 6 to 8, God's mighty power. There are four vessels and four axe heads hidden in the picture below. Can you find them? The next week lesson is Lesson 10E, titled, God Takes Care of Elijah. See you next week. Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. You are all welcome to answer class. Hope you had a lovely week. God bless you. Before we start our lesson this morning, I want you to look up and see what I'm about to show you. Here yeah, is a bell ringing. If it is in the school, it will be telling those people around there to change the direction at which they are. Or maybe for them to go into a particular place, the bell will be ringing to everybody there. Also, we have the Bible. The Word of God. The Word of God contains warnings for those that are unsaved. Warnings for them to be able to turn away from their wicked ways. And at the same time, it's like a bell to the saved soul as well, preparing them to the time they will dine with Jesus Christ and also to feed on his word. That will now lead us into our today's lesson titled, Which Direction? I will now call on Ife to recite a memory verse for us. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Our text is taken from Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 20 to 32 and 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. But we are just going to read some selected verses. I want you to open your Bible wherever you are and read along as Catherine will come forward and read for us from Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 18 to 24 and 26. 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son that shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him 21 but if the wicked will return from all his sins that he hath committed 
and keep all my statues and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live, he shall not die. 22. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. 26. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them for his iniquity, that he hath done, shall he die. Thank you, Catherine, for that lovely reading. God bless you. Our lesson of today is which direction it centers on repentance what does it mean to repent Re the bible says repentance is the godly sorrow for sin and the decision to go away from that sin that is repentance and whosoever that is in sin needs to repent of his or her sins. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is when we repent of our sins that we can be on God's side. How? For you to repent of your sins, you must have heard the word of God. When you hear the word of God, it condemns all the sins in your life. Then, you will now feel sorry down deep in your, your heart. You feel sorry for that sin. Then you will ask Jesus to pardon you, to forgive you. You must first of all acknowledge all those sins that, oh, Jesus, here I am. This is what I've done. Oh, I'm doing this. You know what you are doing. I know what I'm doing. Maybe you are a liar, for instance. Or maybe you steal. Or maybe you disobey your parents at home. It could even be at school. Or are you the type that are bullying others? All these things, you need to repent of them. That reminds us of our lesson story of today about Patrick that went for two weeks vacation. On his way coming back, he entered a ship going to north instead of him going going to south he never knew that but suddenly at the middle of the sea he discovered that oh he had entered the wrong ship what did he do he went straight to the captain of the ship to show him the right direction. Boys and girls, do you know that whosoever that have not been saved from his life of sin is in the wrong ship? And we need to, the person needs to do that which Patrick did. 
he ran to the captain of the ship. You and me need to run to Jesus because Jesus is the captain of our lives. By so doing, we will be able to confess our sins to Jesus, we pray earnestly and tell Jesus that we will never go back into that, those sins anymore. Then, the Spirit of God from heaven will bear witness with our own spirit that we are now children of God. That is salvation. No matter what you must have done. Never mind. Jesus is ready to save you from that particular sin that you think you have committed. Boys and girls, remember, it is very, very important for us to repent today and be saved. Because the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. And whosoever that is in sin that refuses to repent of his sinful way, we end up in hell. And nobody ever prays to go to hell. Our key statement is, Jesus is the right way. Our class activity is, are you on the right ship? How can you be on that right ship? The answer is in the letters below. Our lesson for next Sunday is lesson 96, titled, Changed. And the memory verse is, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. That is the end of our lesson. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for today's lesson. That is warning us that we need to repent of our ways. We thank you for the primary power lesson as well. Almighty Father, we want you to write all these words in the flesh table of our hearts. Make us the doers of these words and not hearers only, so that at the end of our lives, we want to reign with you in heaven. Thank you for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you for listening. Thank you. See you next Sunday. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.